a live edition of the Garden Report here on Thursday night, late night edition. I know some of you will catch this tomorrow. It's all good. We're also going to have another live edition with Sherrard Josue. They'll be joining us tomorrow, live, 6 o'clock. So stay tuned for that on the schedule. Subscribe, Celtics All Access, CLNS Media, if you haven't. And join us tomorrow night. We'll be talking about the biggest questions. Not just for the Celtics, but around the East, around the NBA, the biggest questions that are going to impact the Celtics as they try to win a championship next year. The biggest factors as far as players go, I got a list of 10 that I put out on Boston Sports Journal last week, and I'm interested in getting Joe Sway and Sherrod. So we'll talk to them tomorrow, 6 o'clock. Tonight, we have a great conversation with former Celtic Mike Muscala, now of the Washington Wizards after the Porzingis trade. I don't know how many people noticed, but Muscala did go down to Washington in the Porzingis trade. Uh, they activated his team option, $3.5 million, I think it was, to make the money work there, and uh, he'll be entering a contract year with Washington. Probably will play quite a bit down there. Uh, they do have some good big men like Daniel Gafford and uh, Denny Abbey is on the bigger side too. So he'll come off the bench, I'd imagine. Uh, but he should play there. I think he could end up being their backup big. And honestly, the Muscala trade was a trade I didn't love. Obviously, I was interested in Jakob Pertl and some of the other options out there. But it was a trade I liked. And the way it played out was kind of awkward. Rob comes back. Al's available. Uh, Grant's still trying to fight for minutes. And Vescala got squeezed pretty bad. They tried to integrate him for a few weeks there. He was playing the four with some other bigs, which I didn't always think was. And he had that big debut, if you remember. Um, but beyond that, not a ton of impact with the Celtics, uh, but he loved his time there. You know, not a lot of laments over the trade when I talk to him here, and you'll hear it in just a second. Um, but he's looking forward to the opportunity to you know, stay in the league another year, uh, you know, help a team that, again, he's going to be able to play quite a bit for here. But that's not why I called. I wanted to hear his perspective on the Celtics' new top assistant, Charles Lee, who's going to be uh, Joe Mazzulla's top man on the bench this year, the chief reinforcement on that assistant coaching staff that many discussed, had many Ime Udoka hires, numerous coaches who would move on after the year, and overall scrambled going into the season. Uh, to come up with a plan and a direction for the uh, 2023 year. And all things considered, again, for the coaching staff, I think they did a pretty good job. You know, you lament the way things turned in the playoffs, but you're looking for some accountability. You're looking for some defensive acumen. And uh, I think strong voices in there, especially, you know, guys who can relate to players. Charles Lee, not a former NBA player, but – as I'll put out this weekend in the piece on him, a guy who was on the doorstep of the NBA, he got a tryout with the Spurs in 2006, uh, made it to just about the preseason, and that was a Spurs team that had Duncan, Ginobili, Parker, you know, before Ime's time, but Popovich, Budenholzer, who he ended up becoming an assistant for throughout his young NBA career in the coaching staffs of Atlanta, Milwaukee, up until last year. So that's where he made his connection. He played a couple more years overseas after that, but he got his start at Bucknell, uh, where he was a star player for four years. Non-scholarship player. The year he went there was the last year in the Patriot League where Bucknell plays, that they weren't doing scholarships. So Lee, even though he was... Kind of an NBA caliber player by the end of his time there. Bucknell was paying his way, taking out loans, financial aid, all the rest. And that was the last year that they did that, Bucknell. That's not what Miscala went through at Bucknell there. Uh, 
uh, Bowie upset some big teams, Kansas, Syracuse at one point. You know, I talked to a bunch of people who played with him there. Those were big years for Bucknell. They ended up ranked toward the end of his senior year, made the tournament, fought with Arkansas. Uh, they had some amazing games through his career there. And as I said, tries out for the Spurs after, ends up overseas, but comes back, ends up on Mike Boonholzer's staff in Atlanta, the first one, I think 2015. And Mike Pascala played on that team as well. So Pascala played for Charles Lee during his first year at Bucknell as an assistant coach on uh, Dave Paulson's staff there. And then played for him in his first year as an NBA assistant coach with the Hawks. So Mascala knows him well, had some great times together. Mascala actually just got inducted into the Bucknell Hall of Fame uh, this week, I believe. So uh, these are two big Bucknell legends, uh, guys who are close, guys who really molded their NBA careers together, uh, whether their entrance to the league through Mascala's senior year at Bucknell or in Lee's case, that first year under Boone Holster as a player development coach with the Hawks. Again, pulling back to that connection he made with the Spurs there. So uh, here's my brief interview with Mascala, who again is getting ready for his first year with the Wizards. Danilo Gallinari is down there as well. Mentioned him. Uh, we mostly talk Lee here, but also a quick look back at Mascala's uh, short time with the Celtics after the trade deadline where they landed him. And uh, this interview, of course, is brought to you by HelloFresh. HelloFresh. New offer here for the second half of September. We're already halfway through September, and no better time to get started with HelloFresh as October comes around, November. These are busy times. Soon you'll be thinking about Thanksgiving season. You'll be cooking then, and by that time, you want to be up to speed, You know, sharpen your skills with HelloFresh and it's easy to do. Under 15 minutes, you're going to have meals ready to go. They go to your doorstep. It's convenient, easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Uh, kick off fresh fall routine with HelloFresh. They handle all the meal prepping, shopping to deliver everything you need to cook up a tasty meal right at home. And they do the hard part and you get to take the credit. Again, Thanksgiving time, you'll be a pro. A uh, new season calls for new meals, and they have a fresh fall lineup of delicious dinners to choose from. Take your pick from 40 weekly recipes that suit your lifestyle from veggie to family-friendly to fit and wholesome. Again, that's why I love HelloFresh. Customizable, affordable. You don't have to go to the grocery store. It's a big one. And going out to eat, forget about it. It's much, much cheaper than going out to eat. I'll tell you that, especially the way restaurant prices have just skyrocketed it's not even close at this point and when you get hello fresh you know you're getting top-notch produce since it travels from the farm to your door in less than seven days love that uh, so skip that extra trip to the grocery store have dinner ready in no time with america's number one meal kit it's hello fresh and if you go to hellofresh.com slash clns50 and use the code clns50 you're going to get 50 percent off plus 15 percent off your next two months so you're going to get 50% off that first order and then 15% off the next two months. It's an amazing offer right now. Uh, again, you can customize the dates it comes on, what you're getting. So you can try a little bit of everything with each delivery. It's almost like you know Christmas at your doorstep. It's, it's that fun delivery feeling. And there's so many options here. Again, 40 plus options that you're going to be able to pretty much try something new every time. I love the fish options. Meat love, of course, Sherrod's favorite. Again, it's HelloFresh.com slash CLNS50. Support the Garden Report. Support HelloFresh. Great sponsor. One of my all-time favorites, really. Love, love, love it. Pre-packaged ingredients, laid out instructions. They make it easy, fun, and affordable, and that's why it's America's number one meal kit. Let's get into it. Mike Mascala on the phone right now. Here's my interview with him uh, from earlier this week. Um, yeah, man, I, I, mean, I always loved his energy, and obviously I knew he was a great player for Bucknell. He um, was on the team that beat Kansas and, you know, kind of put Bucknell on the map. So um, it was cool getting to play for him my senior year. 
and then also the fact that he joined the Atlanta staff uh, with Mike Budenholzer when I was there, you know, so we got a chance to work together for even longer, you know, a few years together there in Atlanta. So that was a blessing uh, to be able to reconnect like that. And what, what do you remember about that team at Bucknell, your senior season, you know, going into it, kind of the expectations you had and, you know, just what kind of team that was that made the, you know, tournament that year? Oh, yeah, that was, I mean, for me, that was, you know, the other seniors on the team, Bryson Johnson, Joe Wilman, Colin Clevon, and, like, you know, we had a good first three years there and felt like, you know, that senior year was, was kind of everything for us, you know. And then, uh, obviously, CJ McCollum played for Lehigh. Now we kind of developed a rivalry, and then he got hurt our senior year. Um, so, you know, it was... You know, we felt like we were for sure the favorites. And, uh, yeah, you know, we won. We couldn't get it done in the tournament. But um, it was a really fun year. You know, I felt like we played really good basketball. And uh, we were just clicking, yeah. Yeah, what made that team so successful? You know, was it the defense? Was it the offense? What, you know, what, what was kind of your calling card on that team? It was both. Uh, I think the coaches there, they did a great job just – making us better as players. We had good practice habits. We were accountable, you know, defensively. Um, and, yeah, we just had a bunch of competitive guys on the team. You know, and we were all pretty close, you know, having played together for a few years at that point. So, um, yeah, I think it was all those things. And what was what was Charles' role in that team? Did you work with him directly at all? Like, you know, what was kind of his job coming in? Um, you know, he was – that was kind of like his – he was new to coaching at that point, you yeah. know, but I could just tell early on that he had a great energy for it. Um, and obviously we all respected him and valued his, you know, what he said, uh, his opinions just because he had been there before, you know, and he had been a part of good teams, and been the leader of those teams. So just for him having that experience along with just kind of his upbeat, um, personable attitude, you know, I think we could all tell early on that he was going to be a great coach. Yeah, and I, I talked to his coach, um, you know, Pat from Bucknell there, and that was what he said. He'd always, you know, light up the room, big personality. You know, what were some ways you kind of saw that, the upbeat energy you, you, you just talked about? Um, I think, you know, just like he uh, he's consistent with it, and, um, you know, just like he just brings a good volume to the room, and he's just uh, assertive and um, confident and... Um, you know, he just he just kind of brings the energy that is important throughout the course of the season too. You know, um, when it's a long season, and um, a lot of it just comes down to you know who has more of that that positivity, uh, more of that juice. Yeah, and what, you know, when you look back on that year, I know you became the all-time leading scorer, and you know, like you said, getting in the March. What was kind of your best memory of that team, and you know, what you guys accomplished that year? good question i mean i was i would just say winning the, the patriot league tournament again everyone's still in the court and all of us hugging each other after you know and just being able to play that that uh, championship tournament game at home you know it's one of the few conferences where they still do that i think you know so uh that was special just to be able to, to close it out especially after how we had ended our season the year before, you know, losing at home to Lehigh in the championship and them cutting down the nets in our own court. You know, it was always kind of motivated for us in the offseason. Yeah, and, and you mentioned Charles joined you guys in Atlanta a couple of years later. Um, you know, how, how would he come along as a coach in those couple of years since you had been with him? And, you know, what kind of contributions did he give to that team that year? You know, were you able to work with him then? Yeah, yeah. No, he was, uh, he was a great, great coach in Atlanta. I mean, um, just a great player development coach. You know, like I said, I got a chance to work with him a lot. He was kind of like my coach, uh, my assistant. And then we always had really good, you know, low minute games where guys who weren't playing a lot would have. We play a five on five, so he would join us along with Ben Sullivan, and you know, you could, he was he was still playing at a high level at that point. So um, yeah, I think just like and his consistency uh, as a player, like. For me personally, working with him, I felt like I was playing some of my best basketball, you know, just uh, walking me through different finishes and different footworks and stuff like that. Um, 
you know, stuff that I felt like was just paying dividends throughout the, the years I was there working with him. Yeah, what were the little things you you kind of worked on, you know, the finishing you talked about, like, you know, what was he kind of able to help you through that year? Um, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, just like, um, just, you know, finishes off the roll, like, you know, some, some one dribble finishes, you know, catching the ball in that short roll, um, just finishes around the basket like that, some, some good ball handling stuff um, that he was able to, you know, show himself. And then for me is, you know, kind of a four or five, I feel like I was able to utilize some of that stuff. Yeah, and so obviously he's joining Boston. You were, you know, you were in Boston for half a year. What are some things you think he'll be able to bring to that team? Is is it the development stuff? Is it his voice? Like, what do you think is going to be his biggest contribution there on that staff? Yeah, it's all that, you know. And then obviously he won the won a ring with the Bucks uh, recently, you know. So having gone through that, seeing what that takes, being a part of that, um, you know, obviously. Celtics have this in championship aspirations, so you know that's. I think it'll be all those things. Yeah, and you know, do you think that's something they kind of needed a voice like that? You know, a guy who you know kind of brings what Charles does to the table. They're able to bring in him, Sam, a couple guys to that staff. You know, based on what you saw there last year. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think they. Uh, you know, they. I never worked with Sam, but grew up watching him. Uh, you know, grew up in Minnesota, so um, yeah. I mean, I, I think that they'll be uh, they'll be great voices and uh, great leaders. Yeah. yeah. And uh, how, how do you kind of look back on your time in Boston? You know, it wasn't very long, but you know, you guys made a playoff push there. Um, you know, almost pulled off that first three nothing comeback. Or, you know, would would you just kind of look back on the short time you had there for you? Oh, I had a great time. Um, you know, I had, you know, it was one of the my most favorite. Um, experience just playing basketball you know it's a great city uh speaks so highly of the city and of the team and people ask what it was like and, um just the fans are amazing you know they love their basketball and they were very supportive um and yeah i just really enjoyed getting to know the city getting to learn about the history of the area uh having some fans some friends and family come out and visit and uh you know play at the garden man it was it was awesome so um yeah, a lot of really fun memories. Yeah, and you know, like I said off the top, you and Danilo getting comfortable there, at DC so far. You know, you know, kind of your goals for this year, and you know, just how, how you're kind of going into it. You know, with camp coming up now. Yeah, you know, I'm just uh, just trying to stay in it. You know, um, I feel like I, you know, it was a blessing to play. You know, you know, deep in the playoffs, um, and just be a part of the, the Celtics for that. And then I played in the prime in the summer. Um, and just try to you know keep playing, keep in shape, uh, just keep learning from the game, keep enjoying it, staying grateful, you know, for the the time I still have playing this game. So that's kind of the mindset I have going forward. Just uh, just doing that, you know, staying in the flow of it, uh, just appreciating every day I have it. I can still play. All right, Mike. Well, appreciate the time. It was good to uh, catch up a little bit here. I think you guys got the Celtics um, October thirtieth, so I'll, oh, I'll be. No. I'll, okay. I'll be down there. I'll you know come say what's up, and uh, like I said, best of luck this year. Okay, cool. Thanks, Bobby. Yeah, I'll see you then, man. Nice uh talking to you. So there it is, Mike Mascala. Appreciate him jumping on the phone down in Washington. I, I liked some of the commentary there on the individual work Lee does. Of course, a player perspective, not the NBA player perspective. That's what Sam Cassell is going to bring there. But a guy who played at a pretty high level has coached some great teams. And that's the one thing you hear from former teammates, former coaches. He's won everywhere. Obviously that Hawks team had a incredible regular season run at the beginning of his coaching career. 2021, as Mike mentioned, they win the championship there in Milwaukee with him. Is one of Budenholzer's top assistants. Worked pretty closely with Giannis. So he played a role in Giannis reaching that next level there uh, as part of the development staff in Milwaukee. Sure, he'll play a similar role with Tatum, with Brown, a wing player who has some size to work with those guys. I remember Mike Moser, who uh, was you know one of the taller, longer development guys on Ime Udoka's and Joe Mazzulla's staff last year was always the guy guarding Tatum and playing one-on-one and 
trying to make it tough on him in practice. Of course, Lee's going to bring more schematically than a lot of those guys did. Bigger part of game plans, bigger part of, I'm sure, the defensive scheme. Lee comes from that defensive background of Boone Holzer and the Spurs and even way back to his Bucknell days. Those were defensive teams, uh, as I learned. And experience. He's been in the league a long time now, almost a decade as an assistant coach. And so a little more experience for the staff. Cassell, decades and decades in the league. I think the these moves, as much as the Porzingis trade, big, big headline for the offseason, some minor moves to fill in the gaps for what they lost in Smart and Grant. Supplementing the coaching staff, not only for – assisting Joe, but pushing Joe, bringing new perspectives to Joe as he's talked about. And if this all works out, uh, formulating a strong staff that's here for the long haul. And Lee did interview for the Pistons job, made it pretty far along there. And when the Celtics hired, Ime had multiple conversations with the Celtics. And I talk about this a lot. This is a guy who was pretty high on their list last time that they were looking for a head coach. So again, to get him as a top assistant here when he had head coaching aspirations in Detroit, in New Orleans, I I thought it was just a massive addition. I know everyone's excited about Cassell, the former Celtic, and what he's done as an assistant coach with Doc and on the 2008 championship team, the toughness he talked with. That was one of my favorite interviews of the year was talking to him out in Vegas I understand all that, but Lee might be the guy who proves most consequential in this team going forward, whether it's as being that final piece of the staff that they needed, or again, really pushing Joe here. The team does struggle. Uh, You know, I think you get the best of both worlds in that sense. Uh, But he, of course, comes here uh, looking to contribute alongside Phil Pressey, several other staff members back with the Celtics here. And, Of course, you'll be able to read more this weekend when uh, my feature on Lee comes out. Talk to a bunch of former teammates, a bunch of coaches. Uh, So excited to shed some light on what he will bring to Boston. And excited to meet him. We're just a couple weeks away from the start of camp here. I want to say media day, for those interested, will be two weeks from Monday. So what are we talking? 15, 16, 17, 18 days? For media day, I love it. I, this has been the most dead August <laughs> you can imagine into September. It's just lowly talk, hard and talk, going over and over again about these additions to the Celtics. And appreciate you all tuning in because you know we gotta we gotta keep it rolling here. We don't we don't just stop recording in the off season, the late stages of the off season. You know we gotta bring you the content, and you guys gotta support. So. Appreciate all that. Of course, what is rolling along right now is NFL football. And this is, I can't stress enough, the last days of this offer. In fact, you might be done by this weekend, I want to say, with this offer. It's FanDuel's best yet. Their official sports wagering partner. And right now, when you head over there, deposit $10, bet five on anything, no Thursday nights rolling along right now as we talk. Plenty of games on Sunday. That Patriots line looks more and more intriguing as the public just goes wild on the Dolphins. Moved to plus three last time I looked here for New England at home. Should have covered that Eagles game. I picked the Eagles in that one, so... I guess I'm 1-0 on my picks here for for you guys, but don't feel great about it. If they kicked a field goal or cashed in late like they should have, would have been a nice Patriots cover and potentially even win for those who felt good in that opener. They fought hard. The defense looked great. You got to like their chances to keep it close against Miami. Now, within three, we'll see. They need a win, though. There's no moral victories two weeks in a row to start the season. So if you like them to bounce back, Beat a Dolphins team that feels pretty good coming off a win against the Chargers out west. Go there, bet five on that, just five, and you're going to get $200 in bonus bets. Now you use it on some futures. 
Some NBA futures, those are all out and live right now. Celtics NBA championship favorites, as we talked about last week uh, with Matt Brooks. We would debate a little bit whether it should be Denver or Boston. I think I agree with him that it should be Denver. But 200 in bonus bets, 100 in off NFL Sunday ticket. And that's the big one right now. I don't know if that one's coming back again. This is this week and it is gone. $100 off NFL Sunday ticket with YouTube TV right now, plus the 200 in bonus bets. And this is first time users only. So if you haven't signed up yet, this is the time to do it. Go to fanduel.com slash Boston. Bet $5 and get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now's the best time to join FanDuel. It's easy to use, and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash Boston and kick off the NFL season with an offer you don't want to miss. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. And there's the offer in full fee right there. FanDuel.com slash Boston and 21 plus President Mass. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Thank you, FanDuel. Show them some support. Uh, let's close this out. Not a ton going on from this week. In fact, very few headlines on the Celtics front. We didn't debate some of the biggest factors, biggest stories tomorrow, 6 o'clock live with Sherrod and Joe Sway. If you've missed them, miss them. They'll be back soon. Uh, as soon as tomorrow, John, Jimmy, I believe we'll hear from them late next week as we'll start to see some guys piling back into camp. I guess that's probably the big headline of the week. Number one, Banton, Pritchard, Horford, Rob, Shvi Mihailuk now in Boston. Jay Scrub, J.D. Davison both there as well. Sam Hauser, Luke Cornett back in town. So more and more Celtics visible at the facility there. I don't know if I mentioned Pritchard. He's there too. Uh, so you're waiting on Tatum, Brown, Porzingis. I'd have to imagine we'll be back next week. I, they just went to uh, Latvia to celebrate the fifth place finish, top five finish in the World Cup. Big, big uh, score for Latvia, as we've talked about on different podcasts here. They could potentially make the Olympics next summer. In, for, in Paris, and not many teams do that. be the first time ever for Latvia. So uh, they went back, celebrated that. I'm sure he'll drop into Boston next week. You're waiting on Brogdon. Again, my biggest question going into camp, the health of Brogdon, where he's at. You've heard that it's a healing process a little bit right now off the trade. There's nothing I'm looking to. I, you know, Everyone's looking for Porzingis and the plantar fasciitis. That'll get better. He'll be able to figure out how to treat and play through that and sustain with the amount of time that's available now before the season actually starts. Where's Brogdon at? Because last time you saw him, didn't look like he could even shoot the basketball in that series. And we've heard optimism from Joe, Brad, all the Celtics brass that he'll be good to go. No surgery required. Let's see. Uh, no, No video of him there. Hasn't arrived at the facility yet. Again, not abnormal. Tatum and Brown, you saw some pictures of them on Instagram working out. And I think it's L.A. with Pierce. Yeah, Pierce lives out in L.A. They're in L.A. Uh, Still getting after in the gym. Love to see that. We talked about that a couple weeks ago with Joe Sway. Awesome. Can't beat that. Get on the same page. Be in the same gym. Be doing the same drills. Brown even, I think, benefited from a session with Hamlin at least there uh, while Tatum was present. So... Love it. And they're both there talking to Pierce, connecting with the Celtics legend, who I'm sure has plenty of stories and perspectives to tell uh, them. We talked about this with Joe Sway. There's just no downside to doing what they're doing out there. Love it. We've been crying for this for years. Maybe they did it behind the scenes and there wasn't as much publicity about it. And at the end of the day, they have plenty of time together during the regular season. But the effort, the optics, the conversations allowed by that time together, I, I, I just can't stress it enough. It, it sets a serious tone for the season. It addresses the fact that these guys have stuff to continue to work through here. And you know, Tatum talked a little bit about that in his interview with Jeff Goodman that we had on here on the podcast, a big interview that dropped with the messenger last week where Tatum said a lot of things that make you feel good going into this year. Now on the leadership front, 
not as embracing. Uh, said he's going to continue to lead his own way and use his voice in the manner and style which he always has, which isn't necessarily a wrong thing. But as we've talked about with Smart, one of the biggest reasons they made that move, I think, is to propel Brown and Tatum up the hierarchy as leaders, make their voice more prominent and crucial uh, and central to the locker room. So it has to get a little bit louder, has to get a little bit more consistent. And as Tatum said in the interview, there's ways he does it behind the scenes that no one sees, which you always have to factor in there. But I do think it's a it's an ever-evolving process for those two in terms of using their voices, holding guys accountable, holding themselves accountable, which they've both gotten much better at, I think. And send this team back on the right path when they fall off the tracks because that's going to be their primary responsibility along with the on-court stuff this year. Horford can only do so much, especially if he's moving to the bench and playing less this year. Grant's gone. And Blake seems gone, which was a big story last week. So it's crucial. Those two speaking up, being on the same page. Figuring out how to run stuff on their own too, being connected. That's the big, big one. And Tatum said, people say it's uh, my turn, your turn. And I don't think so. You do see it the way they go in waves sometimes, quarter to quarter. The passing stats sometimes being off with them each night in terms of how often they connect. And even just the passing sequences of four or five guys touching the ball in any given possession. You want to see more of that. And it's one of many areas I'm looking to with Brad, uh, with Joe rather, Brad, Charles coming in, Sam Cassell. Are they able to prioritize more things like that? The multiple layers of passing. We've had plenty of debates with Joe in these press conferences in the deep stages of the postseason. Quick shot or layers of ball handling and extra passes and finding the next best shot. He favored the quickest shot last year. Did that always work out? I think there were reasons that were valid behind it. But how does he grow and evolve, see what works and what doesn't work? That's something he also talked about last time. Uh, We had Joe in front of the microphones. And before long, he'll be doing so again at training camp. Just a couple more weeks as we talked about here. Uh, That's all for now. The only other thing, we reported Taylor Funk joining the fold here. So... Make it 18 players out of the total of 21 that the Celtics can have. And with the Exhibit 10, he'll probably be waived and play for Maine this year. Two-way slot is open. They got DJ Stewart, who's probably the favorite to sign to that. Uh, But that does remain unfilled for now. I think you have to sign a 15th rosters player by uh, that rule that added the third two-way spots that might be why they're waiting on that would be if that's the case Uh, lamar stevens still being linked to them no michael scotter reported that don't know if that's old interest or not they've been connected to tj warren a bunch of other wings at this point but you have to think my high luke was that wing they were looking for when they signed him one spot is open here not blake for now still waiting on Waivers with other teams, Spurs, Thunder, others have to get their rosters down to 15 by the regular season. Uh, Thunder, I think, had as many as 20 uh, just a couple weeks ago before they made moves on a guy like uh, Garuba and Ty Ty Washington. So uh, they have cut downs still to come. I think the Celtics are going to hold out, wait on that. That's been reported. And uh, that's where things stand. Getting slow, slow. It's killing me. Want to get back to camp. Want to get back in action here. We do potentially have another interview coming this weekend. For those of you who just joined it, front half of the show, we talked to Mike Mascala. uh, We talked a little bit about his time in Boston, but mostly Charles Lee, the new assistant coming in. So go check that out if you missed it. We're back tomorrow, 6 o'clock live. Sherrod, Joe Sway, and I we are going to talk about the biggest stories going into this season. Not Celtic stories. We've been over that. We'll talk about that plenty. But the ones around the league, they're going to dictate whether or not the Celtics win a championship here. And before we get out of here, good shout-out to our friends at AG1. 
Go to drinkag1.com slash garden for a year's supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. They've been a great sponsor to us for a long time here, and we've enjoyed it for that whole time. The scoop in your water each morning that gets your day going right. 75 vitamins, minerals, adaptions, probiotics, and more gut health, energy, all the ingredients for your health and diet that set a good tone for your overall health and well-being going into this fall, and that's very important. It's easy. It's got that nice tropical flavor, and there's a lot of cool gear here too. I'll be wearing that crew neck often before long here that they sent. Nice glasses to drink it out of, and uh, the green theme container for all you Celtics fans. Nice green theme to all their products. It's Athletic Greens, now AG1. New site, drinkag1.com slash garden. Go there, get a year's supply of vitamin D. Five free travel packs with your first purchase. Thanks for everyone who joined us tonight here live. Great talking to all of you. I'm excited to get together again tomorrow night. And then, just about time for training camp. Jimmy, John, back next week. Joe Sway, Shira, join me tomorrow. And... In case there's any news, anything pops up, a 15th man signs, subscribe. Celtics All Access. We're going to get a video up instantly when that happens. So appreciate all your support. And whenever we go live, hit the bell. You'll know, even if it's uh, just a couple hours before we decide to rally together a show here. And, uh, of course, support our sponsors. Big ones tonight, HelloFresh.com slash CLNS50. For 15% off over the next two months, plus 50% off your first order. And FanDuel, last chance on their offer. FanDuel.com slash garden. $5 gets you 100%, $100 off NFL Sunday taken, $200 in bonus bets. That's all for tonight. Have a great night, everyone. Great weekend. Just a couple days away from that. Enjoy the football. Enjoy. The rest of your summer here, you know, summer rolls into September and appreciate you uh, going to us for your Celtics coverage. I'm Bobby Manning. This has been the Garden Report uh, with Mike Mascala talking Charles Lee. I'll talk to you tomorrow night.